If you are uh, moving without obstacles, all your uh, resources are applied to uh, control the manipulator because you don't have to care about the obstacles. As soon as you detect that there are some obstacles, then what is more important is the navigation to avoid collision. And once you uh, get the final position, again, you use only manipulator control. That means that in this system, the embedded control system has uh, tasks to avoid obstacles, to perform some manipulator activities, and so on. And not all have the same priority, and not all have, are uh, run simultaneously, depending on the uh, scenario, on the conditions. And then you must shift from one to another, depending on what is happening uh, around. So uh, here, you have a car, an automatic car, and you may have this kind of interventions. Braking is one kind of uh, operation. Steering, when you uh, detect an obstacle to try to avoid it, or combining both, steering and braking. So in, in that case, you have uh, different tasks for braking and for avoiding the obstacle, and you can mm, do different combinations of them depending on the uh, environment. <coughs> uh, Non-conventional sampling, as I mentioned before, uh, the data can be available at different times and the control can be updated at different times. So we must deal with uh, sampling patterns which are not regular anymore. And then mm, we must consider non-synchronism, different timing, uh, multi-rate, as I mentioned before, and then uh, we must uh, take into account the contraction of the delays and uh, that the delay could be time variable. <coughs> And something which is interesting is that small changes in the code can cope with these conditions. So if you have a basic controller, a PID controller, a digital PID controller, uh, in the classical uh, implementation, just with slight changes, you can cope with uh, uh, delays, you can cope with uh, variable time delays, just having some extra measurements and so on. So it's not so complicated, and I have no time to enter into that, but with small changes in the code, you can uh, cope with these conditions. Also, in the case, in the case of uh, failures, you may have uh, virtual sensors, and just these virtual sensors cannot be, shouldn't be running any time, uh, should be only uh, fired as far as you detect that is, there is a failure of one sensor. Or if you have some... Uh, uh, congestion in the communication channels, the same. And the problem here, from the control point of view, is as soon as you change the control algorithm, you must ensure that the switching from one controller to the next and back uh, doesn't provoke instability in the plant, which is not an easy task. You must have a controller which is stable, which makes the system stable in one, condi in one condition, and you may have another controller which makes uh, the process stable in another condition. But if you switch from one condition to the other continuously, the system could become unstable. And uh, this is the, one of the issues in hybrid control, switching from uh, one controller to another. But in general, uh, this is not uh, the main uh, relevance, the main importance for us. Also, uh, I'm sure that most of you have heard about the Kalman filter, and this is uh, the classical uh, option to deal with, uh, non, uh, uh, with missing data. You have a Kalman filter, and the Kalman filter is providing an estimated of the, the plant uh, signal uh, instead of, uh, in, in spite of uh, failures on the transmission or in the data acquisition. <clears throat> okay, so we have uh, uh, also decision and supervisory control, and again, uh, stability issues are the most important, but this is not a problem if uh, the changes are seldom. And uh, what we mentioned at the beginning, changes in the sampling rate could be uh, relevant based on the uh, load in computing, and again, we must consider the uh, stability problems. 
And going and going uh, on the fault tolerant, we have also the problems of uh, is commuting and changing in the uh, mode of operation. But <clears throat> I want to go to the idea of the control kernel. <clears throat> uh, of course, all you know what is the kernel of an operating system, and uh, <clears throat> the, this is uh, a picture of the structure. And uh, our idea here is that other than these basic services, for us, for a control point of view, mode changes and fault tolerance are fundamental. The rest are uh, not so relevant for us. And what should be a control kernel, uh, an operating system kernel for control? The kernel should, be, uh, should provide fault tolerance and should provide a quick and reliable change in the mode of operation based on uh, events and based on emergency signals. Uh, this is the uh, transparency we have already seen. So all these activities here are the basic and the most priority ones in implementing a, a control. So our idea is that all these activities should be separated from the rest uh, of the activities and should be ensure that they will be active anytime we need. And we will um, put all these activities in a special uh, part of the implementation, which is what we call the control kernel. <clears throat> so the control kernel, uh, we realize that for any sensing and any actuation, we always have the same uh, routine of activities, taking the signal, putting into uh, uh, context uh, um, the thresholds and uh, so on, and the same for the uh, control action. So. <clears throat> The idea is that we have here uh, the operating system with uh, a number of uh, activities. We have here the application level, and in between we have the control kernel. And then the idea is to implement this as a middleware to uh, be sure that in the, uh, in, in, if we don't have enough time to compute the control algorithm here, at least we have some uh, reaction to the plant and we provide some uh, exit. So this will be the structure <coughs> that we suggest. This is the operating system. This is the middleware for communication and the middleware for control. And here is the uh, application. And this middleware should provide some functionalities, uh, should uh, allow to define sensor actuators to uh, communicate through the uh, communication middleware, and should have different uh, possibilities to uh, schedule the activities and should also uh, allow for changes in mode of operation. And we must also have the possibility to define the controller parameters and compute a reduced model a controller locally. So this is the a structure of the middleware. We have an acquisition module and a computer action delivering module and a supervision module here. Here is the real-time system. Uh, operating system, and here are the sensors, the actuators, and so on. And here are the level of applications where the full uh, algorithms for the controllers are implemented. So this uh, middleware should be in charge of first uh, acquire the data, and these are different sensors, and all these data are stored locally with some uh, prediction of the data in case we will not be able to censor the next one. This could be, as I mentioned before, a Kalman filter or something like that, which is implemented locally and is connected with the controller. And the same, <coughs> and the same with the actuation. We have the actuator, and we, uh, in the middleware, we have uh, the control actions that we are going to uh, send, but also the backup action, the secure action, and uh, the next references. And in the case that we don't have uh, enough time to compute the best uh, control action, we always have locally some uh, activity on, and some uh, mm, information to send. So <coughs> uh, we uh, divide the uh, implementation into uh, kind of uh, nodes. The service uh, node with uh, all the uh, algorithms and the light node and you see here the line node 
is mainly uh, dealing with uh, these activities we have said are the most uh, critical one. Uh, here, for instance, you have the plant. This is the line node. And here is the <coughs> uh, simple controller, the switching, and also the <coughs> supervisor. And we have here the service node with the full uh, control algorithm. And this is in charge of commuting from this signal to that one, depending on the resources availability. If at the time of the de uh, control action delivering, there is nothing new here, we will send the backup. And then, uh, in any case, we are ensuring that the plant is receiving some information which is meaningful. <coughs> so, <coughs> there are several scheduling policy, uh, policies that can coexist depending on, on the conditions. And <coughs> uh, at the level of the kernel, we have uh, different activities that which are uh, <coughs> Uh, in a queue and were uh, sent in an, uh, as uh, resources availability. Uh, currently, we have implemented this uh, in C. Sorry, it's not in A. <coughs> and we are using uh, using a, a particle, and it can be executed in different controllers. And then going to the last uh, slide, <coughs> the conclusions. <coughs> uh, we. I have to tried to forward to you that the need of the co-design of the control algorithms and their implementation. Uh, more and more, we have flexibility in the control scenarios. There is no anymore the, the process, the interface, and the controller, and we can uh, do whatever we want in the controller. Uh, it's uh, distributed, uh, event-driven, embedded, and so on. The computing resources are distributed. There are limitations in communication and computing. The, we must ensure always uh, the safety of the control, not the control, the safety of the control at plant. And we must uh, have different treatment for the signals, for the tasks, and for the models, depending on the resources uh, availability. And uh, we must integrate uh, all these activities in designing the computer. So I hope that you capture the idea that we must co-design and take into account the control performances and the computing resources available at any application. Thank you very much. Sorry for being <laughs> Thank you very much to you, time. So we have ab about three minutes for questions. So Franco. Two quick questions. The first is, thank you. Two quick questions. The first one. The software that you mentioned in your uh, slide uh, before the last, is it open source? The second question, you mentioned that uh, uh, event-driven control is uh, uh, complicated. Do you mean from a, a control system analysis point of view? Okay, thank you. Well, intuitively, it's very appealing. <clears throat> but uh, from the control point of view, uh, you don't have a model of a, you have the model of the continuous time plant. If you sample regularly, you can discretize, fine. If you have different sampling rates, you can have a multi-rate, fine. But if you sample any time you want, any time there is an event, then the model, uh, it's rather complicated and should be uh, treated in a stochastic uh, framework. In a sense, it's, it's similar to uh, differential equation solvers, which change the, the step where they uh, sample to <coughs> solve the equation, depending how fast the data is changing. It intuitively, it seems yes, appealing yes. to uh, adopt the same thing. Yes, but uh, even more complicated in the sense that uh, you may have different signals with different uh, s s events. So it's not just one event. So if you are, you can simplify the issue and say, well, I have the computer, I have the process, and I don't know at what time I will take the signal and I will compute the control action. But this is not the case. The case is that you can compute one action and next time uh, the other one and the other one different. And so you need different models for different measurements for different events. So it's rather complicated. Any more questions? So thank you, thank you very much.